Secrets of Magic just came out. That's pretty cool. It did. I haven't had a chance to look at it. Yeah. Dear listener, we are vamping uh, because we're waiting for Leif. So uh, we decided, I decided, it's sort of executive decision kind of thing that we're just going to talk about Pathfinder 2 stuff because Pathfinder 2 is pretty cool as well. Uh, It is indeed. It's very cool. Secrets of Magic is cool. We got the the Magoose and the Summoner. (laughs) Magus. Uh, it's, I'm pretty sure it's Magoose, Nick. Come on. I, I don't the, think and, that's true. And the summoner, summoner can have a Magoose as a companion. It can. The, <laughs> the fearsome Magoose is a known predator. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the summoner could have a Magoose dedication as well, and then you could have a, a Magoose summoner with a Magoose. I don't know. Am I the only one who thinks about Pete the Dragon every time they look at our, um, uh, right. our Pete the Dragon 100% makes sense. Summoner. Pete the Dragon 100% I, makes sense. I I don't think about it, but that does make sense. Uh, every, every time. Oh, hey, oh, it's, oh, a it's a Leif. That's a Leif. We can, we can kick out Leif, Leif 2. I will kick out Leif get, 2. Get this robot out of here. I smell an imposter. Beautiful. I I was just making, oh man, that reminds me of when sweet old grandma would make some fresh impasta. You could smell it for miles. Ah, you're right, Shane. The dragon does not look like Pete at all, but it's just what what it makes me think of. I'm like, it's an imaginary best friend dragon that becomes a real dragon. Yeah. Uh, It is a fantasy version. While Leif's camera is sorting itself out. Yeah, Shades, I'm totally in agreement that the uh, Magoose can be a martial artist from the start. It's really cool. It's your level. I think you can get it as a level one feat, although you pretty much have to wait until level two for because the Magoose doesn't give you a level one feat. It's like the wizard in that, which is interesting. Um, you don't get one from like a school or something? No, you get hybrid oh, studies. So let's talk about it, shall we? So the, the Magoose... <laughs> gets hybrid, yes, let me just steeple my hands here. Uh, the Magoose gets hybrid studies. That is their sort of schools, if you will, like uh, mm-hmm. if we were to compare them to subclasses. Um, and so hybrid studies are like twisting tree and that focuses on the staff uh, and using a staff as a weapon as well as a spell casting tool, uh, which is really cool. It turns the staff's damage into a D6. And if you're wielding it with two hands, it gets reach, parry and something oh, nice. Else. Yeah, it's kind of really sad cool. that I can't effectively hit things with my staff uh, as a caster. I, I yeah, want them yeah, to make so. a. I want them to make a chef class. <laughs> like a no, we're not chef. Chef. We're talking about. <laughs> we're talking about the Magoo Slave and Pathfinder 2's new book, Secrets of Magic. Magus. Magus. It's Magoo. Oh, oh the Magus. Okay. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no, no. Wait, it's oh. the Magus. <laughs> Uh-huh. The Magus, yeah. <laughs> um, so the next Magus hybrid study is, uh, or another one I should say, is Inexorable Iron, which is just a fantastic name for a hybrid study. And that's the two-handed weapons focused uh, Magu- uh, uh, Magus. Sorry. Um, I just and... wish the iconic was a Minotaur now. <laughs> mm. So the Inexorable Iron focuses on like, you know, uh, relying on your the magic of your weapon to replenish your own stocks of vitality where like you get um you get temporary hit points every round if you're in an arc this one stands that the magus gets uh there's another one i can sounding more and more like a magus if it's getting temp hit points tom what sounds like more and more like a magus if it's getting temp hit points (laughs) and it's two-handed weapons gus loves his two-handed grill um in, in other news, I I'm playing uh started playing a necromancer last night and holy shit, you guys! I'm a uh, holy pronk, you guys. Yeah. yeah. What what kind of a necromancer? Oh, um, the an animal companion necromancer. They're a they're a tengu necromancer with a raven as a companion. <clears throat> a buddy? It's I just birds all the to, way I, down. I want you to have that moment, like you have my axe, you have my bow, you have your brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And you have 
the dead villagers from the last raid. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> the necromancer's not. A... I was asking what class you're playing. Oh, uh, wizard, wizard, necromancer. Mm, yeah. So wizard with the necromancy school. I was like, wait, but they're 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 like that's not necromancer's not a class, like. <laughs> no, it's not. It is technically a subclass. You are right. Well, but I... you make because you can make a necromancer out of a wizard or a sorcerer or a cleric. Oh, can you? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, oh. there's the divine, uh, there is the, what, what is Nyx in our Extinction Curse game? Sorcerer. Nyx is a sorcerer. sorcerer. No, she's a sorcerer, but what uh, bloodline? Is it? Uh, the necromancy undead? one. Is it? Undead. The undead. Yeah, the undead bloodline. Um, yeah, yeah. But, you know, props to you, Leif, for not going evocation wizard. Uh, Air five, or virtual high five, because I, too, have played a not evocation wizard and it's a lot of fun and you know what you still get to cast evocation spells anyway i very I rarely say, get to play him but when i do get to play a wizard i love divination myself who yeah who needs who needs ev evocation spells anyways when you've got eldritch blast i mean grim tendrils <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right i think we've stalled enough oh, we stalled so long there. i was able to take part in the stalling yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh I'd like to thank everyone that's watching and hopefully eventually listening. Um, this is episode 47. I still am amazed every time I say the, say the new number for the new episode because holy crap, that's a big number. Uh, Harrowing the Hook, the icebreaker this week. It's courtesy of Butt Stubble. It's if you were a CEO of a fast food chain, what kind would it be? <laughs> Nick? I... Tom, oh, Leif, I volunteer which one? Tribute. Yeah. Tom, go! <laughs> so, uh, also, oh my god, Leif, your familiar is your wife? Uh... <laughs> no, no, I just, it, my, 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 my Tengu is very gregarious and outgoing and likes to, to mess with people, play tricks on them, you know, kind of like a raven does. Love um, it. Oh so it was, it was, it was a goof, it was for the goofs. Fair enough, I, I support you and your goofs, uh, as as our resident goof master uh just put that hat right on my head there um so the answer to the question that jen asked slipper slope what's next burying your wands sorry yeah How'd that is done? what we we're advocating for next so it's a sentient wand yes that's fine i would be jacinto rather would be the ceo of some Nobody wants. Nope. Uh, my my <laughs> mind is all over the place. I'm back in school, friends, and it's. Uh, I forgot what it was like to wake up at 5:45 in the morning. So, Vicento would be the CEO of a fast food chain that serves uh, probably not plant-based burgers. That was my first thought, and then I was like, wait, I'm plant. So this would be like like uh keto you know, keto full circle <laughs> you're like eat meat based burgers yeah yeah so it'd be the exact opposite of gus really in that how <laughs> gus is like a you know vegetarian because of you know he's a he's he's a he's a bull he's a cow person he's a minotaur he's a face minotaur um but yeah so jacinto would probably do some sustainably sourced uh meat products perhaps lab grown and whatnot. So it's, uh, you know. Not not like uh, burgers made of crickets and things? I mean, bugs are the bane of insects or of plant plants often. Bugs are the bane of bugs. You're right. It, you know um, what I meant to bugs. say. I was, I could Cicada no. burgers? Jet, I am not, I am not one to give <laughs> flame right now for uh, <laughs> rambling and saying and repeating oneself. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, maybe maybe Bug Burgers or uh, oh, that could be that could be the uh, name of the chain is Bug Burger. Uh, so yes, thank you everybody for coming up with my answer. For Bug me. Burger, and then in parentheses, <laughs> uh, no uh, Sheeran or Hannikin were harmed in the making of these. <laughs> oh no, these. I see. Shades is having too much fun with the things we're going to say when we call out his uh, their rerolls over there. <laughs> This we're not even going to spoil it. <laughs> nope, nope. No, we're not spoiling it. Nope, don't spoil it. <laughs> All right. What about Lahan, Nick? 
Um, oh, uh, if Lahan had a fast food restaurant, it would be ice cream all the time. Just, See, was, just ice cream, like Baskin Robbins. I was going to guess like a 1950s like malt shop diner type thing. Yeah, maybe it's just a malt shop. I think it has to be ice cream. So yeah, a malt shop. Fun fact on the topic of ice cream shops, Ithaca, New York is home slightly disputed with the city I think in Wisconsin is home to the first ice cream sundae. Interesting. Oh, hey. Yeah. Very yep. neat. I did a we whole have... bulletin board on this as an RA in college in Ithaca. We have 20 minutes from from where I live right now. An Amish creamery. That is the best ice cream I think I've ever had. It's great. That sounds I'm in, good. I'm inherently negatively disposed towards that. <laughs> Why? Uh, I grew up in Middlebury, Indiana, not far from the Essen House, and I uh, my my great grandparents on my mother's side and my great great grandparents or great 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 grandparents on my dad's side were Amish, and almost every interaction I had with the Amish at large, especially during my time working at McDonald's as a high school student, they're all holier than thou assholes. <laughs> Oh, these ones are really nice. <laughs> Look, if they, you lived without electricity and uh, and the like comforts that we've come up with over the last hundred years, you'd be a bit holier than thou too. Okay, but that doesn't mean your kids should walk into the lobby, pull their pants down, and poop in front of in in the entrance to your, to the local McDonald's. Nor should you purposefully make a mess all over the entire lobby or allow your children to smear poop in the, on the bathroom walls. <laughs> That's, same, that's just bad thing that I said before you are. Again. I'm not sure the kids yeah, that, did that in the bathroom, actually. That might have been adults. But the lobby thing was definitely a kid because I saw it happen. <laughs> wow. I, I can honestly say I regret getting us off topic. Leave a quick answer. <laughs> yeah, anyways. Anyways. Yeah, Leave. Ava, Ava wouldn't own a fast food chain. She'd just own a, a food truck that sold goblin ears. Oh, like, oh, yeah, goblin ears. Yeah, like, you know, like elephant ears with the... The fried bread and cinnamon. Nope. Nope. Goblin ears. Do you know what elephant ears are? Um, I absolutely know what elephant ears are. It's, ah, we just got them down at the shore when we went to the shore for the beach. Oh, yeah. nice. When you yeah. said goblin ears, I was thinking. Oh, yeah, they're, they're a big deal at our state fair. And yeah, yeah. Well, when you yeah. said goblin ears, I was thinking they're deep fried actual goblin ears, but everyone else is thinking it's like jerky that, you, that you've that you seasoned and then battered and deep fried or something. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, it's it's deep fried goblin ears. You might get shut down by the health department. I don't think you can serve sentient creatures, Ava. Maybe Ava food, three, maybe is. Ava three D prints them. Two sentient creatures, but I don't think you can serve sentient creatures as food. Maybe Ava three D prints them. Uh, and then lab grown goblin ears. Speaking of lab grown meat, which has come up multiple times in the last couple of minutes. Uh, a lab in Japan has three, successfully 3D printed Wagyu beef with like all of the fatty striations and everything. Oh my goodness. Ooh. That's exciting. I bet the people in charge of Wagyu beef are very unhappy about this. Oh yeah. I'm because 100% that, certain that. That thing's expensive. Uh, all right. <laughs> Being able to like 3D print meat just makes the price of meat from animals go up like it really should be yeah if we could scale up the printing process to the point where it would take the brunt of it then people would be like "Ooh, this is hand raised beef yes and then the Ooh. price of like animal beef will, will will go up that would be a good thing for the world uh all right i think we're done stalling <laughs> we've stalled way longer Are we? than normal uh, uh, did we want to make up a restaurant for Finn? Oh, yes. Um, It'd probably just be like Solar Burger. Home of the Solar Burger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, what's the equivalent to a Steak and Shake? Finn feels like the like high school me hanging out at Steak and Shake at 2 in the morning on a weekend. It's <laughs> Space Steak and Space Shake. So, Steak and... <laughs> Spake and shake. Spake. Zombies. Oh, no. Um, I also like something shark-themed uh, as a pun off of his name, Finn. Yeah, that would be good. 
Finn's yeah. Surf Shack. Yeah, oh, that's that perfect. Good. With Finn and some flip flops and a Hawaiian shirt on, over his yeah. armor. <laughs> I got yeah. a bite yeah. at Finn's Surf Shack, and it's the 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 t shirt has like a shark biting somebody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everything's tiki. And the yep. the 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 uh, mascot is like a shark, like jumping out of the water, but it has red bird wings. <laughs> yes, of course it does. All right, so this says recap of last week, but this was many weeks ago. Uh, our heroes, well, last week we were here. Y- you all uh, bartered with an endbringer <laughs> devil, uh, which I thought was going to devolve into a fight because oh man, you felt like you guys wanted to fight so bad. But you did barter oh. with it. You managed to find a way to protect the region for probably millennia. And then you kind of traipsed off to the to the find to the hook, the home of the Krieg Ogre clan, and possibly to confront someone that you have heard the name you've heard the name Barl Breakbones, and it seems like you wanna have a s you wanna have a word with them. Because it seems like they are in charge of the ogres, the Kriegs, and have sent them out to do mischief. Um and one thing I thought of after the fact was when the, your Archon sort of became elevated and sort of took up that role on the shield wall, I thought of a pretty fun visual where as you were flying away, the wall was sort of, tra- the, the, the generator was sort of transmogrified and it went from like a dull gray beaten up stone edifice that's like 10,000 10, years old and it just sort of became like white pristine marble with accents and it's like, it's got sort of like celestial overtones now. Mm, I like it as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because if that's a reflection of what is powering it, then yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and you did make it to the hook and you using Ava's survival skills managed to navigate f- up the up the uh, the icy rocky asteroid evading the automated defenses and you killed a couple ogres outside the bulkhead made up of the welded together hulls of probably pirated spaceships and that's where we stopped we there was a door in front of you. Okay, so you say there's a door in front of us, but I see us all on a dune in the in the. Yep. So it's... this is where the door would be. This is a it's a big, heavy, thick metal wall. There would be an airlock like right there. I. It was a quickly together thrown together Photoshop the day that I expected you to get here, and then it didn't happen. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the last vestiges of the latest Song of the Spheres sort of dissipate as we all approach the gate. Asento will direct Artani to like stick with Ava, but he'll he'll be a little behind at this point. Uh oh, something has shifted. Did it? Did, did Hydra uh, left? Hydra disappeared on us. Why did Hydra disappear? Uh, I left the voice channel due to inactivity. Weren't we playing music? We were. We probably forgot to loop it or have not learned the command. Mm. Fix it. Oh yeah, these all the tracks uh, are pretty short, so yeah. Listen to. Alrighty. Well. You have an airlock before you. Um, it doesn't look like it's in bad shape either. It looks like they cut a section out of a starship hull that had an airlock. And they were like, this is where it goes. And just kind of worked around it, built it out. Is this how airlock work? Ava, Ava wants to ex- uh, examine the exterior before heading in. Okay. And this is just me... Not, and my OCD not wanting to leave any of the map <laughs> covered. Fair. That's where we came from. Big no, you oh. guys came from up. Oh, did we? Yeah. Yep. Uh, yes, looks like it's the only way in, guys. <laughs> Is it? I mean, there are exhaust vents belching, smoking hot pollutants into the void of space, which is obscuring your view of the stars above. I guess you could try and work your way through those those tunnels uh, if you wanted. 
but man, would that be inconvenient for me. We can make a new door. <laughs> I mean, I got a life bubble. No, no, we're going in through the front door. Actually, actually, you're, I, actually I know exactly where I would drop you if you guys did that, so you're fine. <laughs> it's up to you. We can make a new door. Yeah, there we go. With explosives. I didn't bring any explosives. That wouldn't make it harder for you, would it, Jet? Uh, I mean, not especially because I, I mean, assume um, pretty much everyone at Starfinder is wearing armor, so they would activate their va their environmental protections. Then you'd all just be in vacuum. There. All right, we can go to the front door. This is fine. <laughs> Ava, the front Ava, door, checks, I like it. Ava checks the controls. Is there are there controls on the exterior? Yeah, they're it's a giant number pad. It looks like one of those. It looks like it's made. It's very crudely manu. It's it looks like it's been oh. like bolted over the top of the existing controls because their fingers are too fat for the regular ones. Let's just disable that and open the door. Yes, <laughs> your natural twenty does it. <laughs> it does a forty-six on on engineering for uh, our listeners who might not see this wonderful, <laughs> beautiful role in in the chat. Actually, because. It's a, it, it's a, Oh, and I'm disabling, so it's a 50, yes. Yes, yeah. you you super duper duper unlock that airlock. No problems. <laughs> Chess goes up and like does the fawns, like, pam. And the door opens. Yep. That is, that is what we always resort to when we're like, oh, this is so easy. I just do the fawns and I elbow it. Like, I've, I've described unlocking things in that exact way as, an, as somebody with engineering. Cause I'm basically playing the Fonz. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not. Um, I'm not calling you out, Nick. I'm not throwing shade. I'm just saying that I I appreciate. The well, design. don't throw shade. Shade uh, would yeah, shade would not know. appreciate it. I'm sure. I've got I've got these noodly arms. Uh, Unless you had the sumo say, suits on, do we think on, Tom could throw funny. a human being? <laughs> I'm now a child, probably. <laughs> <laughs> don't threaten that. I mean, find this video, Tom. I mean, I mean, Judy would probably think that would be amazing if you guys, if we were in like a bouncy castle or something. It's it's an event. Like as it, it's like. She heard me say bouncy castle. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done? It is almost a compulsion when I'm when I'm fond of a child to just sort of curl them into a couch because universally that is a fun experience for kids. I remember loving that as no, a kid. No, I think it's great. <laughs> yeah. I teach all the small ones how to do the run up your legs and flip over thing. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. I, I, I just like take my one friend's uh, like almost two year old and just sort of grab back, stomach, flip. And she's like, ah. See with Judy, it's, this is a thing my brother oh, I meant did. Tom was... is great for climbing because Tom is so tall. This is a thing my brother did to me that I that I do for Judy when she asked for it. It's palms to the ears, and then they hold on to your forearms, and then you lift them up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but what you all see as you go through this airlock is I'm so uh, sorry. no, it's fine. We're all acting a little weird. We're out of out of sorts. Uh, Tom the, is the jungle. Tom at the mouth. Not the jungle of, gym. At the mouth of darkness, because you can only see so far, even with your dark vision. You see spur, jagged spurs of bone protruding up from the stone on either side of the ca this cave entrance, each one towering 20 feet in height and apparently the rib of some monstrous behemoth. Feel free to make a... Mm, actually, I need to see what... I, I, I'm second guessing my choice that I made when I set this DC. Not the number, but the skill. Let me double check. Nope, mysticism check. Mm. Ah, that's all you, Tom. I love, I love that. I love making checks. And here's, here's uh, another natural twenty, I'm sure. Oh, only sorry, only a fifteen for a thirty-seven. Yeah, uh, it's it's a shame that you know that these are the bones of a blue dragon. <laughs> Spooky, love that. These bones have also been decorated with crude scrimshaw carvings, incorporating a seven-pointed star that looks very familiar to you all. It's the star of Asmodeus, of course. Something like this. 
Oh, that's sweet. This is Lamashku. This is the star of Lamashku, yes. No, this is the Sahedra. No. Sahedra. <laughs> Sorry. You did uh, find a lot of stuff re relating to that tied directly into Lamashtu very early on, but they are in fact separate yes. things. That was that was what I was pulling out of my memory. I apologize. Um, oh, no, you're fine. All right, so Sahedrin Rune, which is uh, in turn related to Finn the is wearing rune one, color. I think. Who? Finn is wearing a Sahedrin medallion. You guys found, I think. It gives him that plus one to all his saves, and he can. If he wants, he can, as a standard action, cast False Life on himself, give himself 10 temporary hit points. Just never that, does, because I don't think Lapis ever remembers. <laughs> that, yeah, that sounds right. Uh, so, Sahedrin Rune. Rune Lords. Yes. Uh, or, sorry, Star Lords. <laughs> Pardon. Uh, okay, cool. So... Well, uh, those are the bones of a blue dragon. Hopefully, you know, not an undead blue dragon. And Jacinto, you know, chuckles nervously. Like, like it could still be alive when we're inside it. Goodness, I hope not. I don't. I don't think so. I think it would already probably have. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's let's see what else we've got in here. I think it's just a very ostentatious entryway. So we wander forward. Yep. And what you see here see is an enormous statue standing in frozen vigil, 40 feet tall. There, It looks to be a giant with black skin covered by fissures and cracks like the bed of a dried river. They wear majestic armor, gilded and encrusted with gems, and they're gripping a towering glaive in their armored fist. The giant's face is hidden by a ferocious full helm forged into the sneering grimace of a fanged devil, and around the giant's neck hangs a medallion bearing a seven-pointed star. Oh, hey Finn, that's like the medallion that you're wearing. Oh yeah, I know. Oh, uh, that's pretty, that's, what a coincidence. Uh, and, wow, I didn't realize Lapis had joined us. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> I know. Okay. Um, I'm Lapis. The best feel... part is that the podcast listeners, the future listeners, will never be able to tell the difference. No, yes, exactly. no, never. Feel free to make a mysticism check or possibly a life sciences check. I, I will do a mysticism. I welcome a life science check from anybody else because I only got a, a, that's a natural toot for a 24. Toot, toot. Well, what that 24 um, is going to give you, just one yeah, second, what, what the 24 is going to give you is that that medallion is emanating magic. Oh, okay. Uh, and in, and, and in, a, in a diffuse manner, that magic has sort of spread to the statue, but it's originating from the medallion. Oh, neat. Oh, magic is always worth something. Ava's going to start climbing the statue. Oh, I was just going to send Artanya up there. Artanya can fly. Ava, okay. do you have any life sciences whatsoever? I have I have an inherent two to life science, but it's untrained. Uh, I'll, I'll roll it if you would. Sure. If you will allow yeah, it. I mean, you're physically touching it. I'm going to give you a bonus. I was going to give you a plus five. Uh, 14. <laughs> I rolled a nine. You're not sure that this is actually a statue. Ah, uh, gleam. Boy, I'm just... Oh, this doesn't feel so rocky. No, it's, it feels a little bit rocky, but as you're finding handholds and grips into the, like, dried, cracked-looking surface, it's feeling a bit fleshy inside. Ew. Well... We're already halfway there. No stopping now. It doesn't move. It doesn't react to you climbing it. So you do make it all the way up there to that medallion, and it is a it is a massive ma medallion. It uh it the medallion itself. If you go to remove it, it weighs a full two bulk. Oh geez. Well. Uh -huh. if 
if I am able to, I will remove this medallion and put it in my in my null space bag. Uh, when you remove it, the the statue starts crumbling, breaking apart, turning to dust, and just sort of falling into a pile. The armor okay. remains. Um, uh, it's going to be slow enough. I'm not going to make you roll anything. It's just you're I, in, you're in a pile of corpse dust, is what it is. I, I have a death pack anyway, so <laughs> yeah. So you so what it is is you start to fall and you fire off your jet pack, and you just blow the dust out everywhere, causing it to circulate, and everyone is just getting a face full of corpse dust. Because that wasn't truly a statue. His environmental protections. No, you know what? We're probably life bubble. It's fine. Uh, uh, the the armor remains. It it is very ornate. Uh, I forgot to make a handout for you for this, but it is a special. It, it is specialist defense series armor. It's just very ornately made. Specialist defense also series. defiance also series. Very sorry. large. No. Oh. Yes, it is sized for a gargantuan creature. As uh, is the Sahedrin medallion. You I could technically wear that Sahedrin medallion if you wanted to carry around two bulk. Uh, <laughs> I do not. Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's heavy armor. It's level 10 heavy armor. Plus 15, plus 18. Does it have a... It's a max, uh, max dex bonus of plus two, speed adjustment minus ten feet, armor check penalty minus four. That's that's some clunky boy. Yeah, gross. Ava Ava likes her her mobility heavy armor. Mm, you're wearing that Kyokor armor, aren't you? Uh, advanced Aridishell, baby. Ah, yeah. Okay, that's the other one. Yep. <laughs> the the OG mobility heavy armor. Yeah, and because I forgot to make you a handout. Hey, Bertram. Um. So that defiance armor, uh, that that value on that is twenty nine thousand nine hundred and fifty credits. The Sahedrin medallion, I think I I know I set a price for the original medallion, and I'm going to shoot from the hip here and say probably about forty five hundred. It is so noted. Why is the defiance series armor quite so expensive or valuable? Uh, I th cannot remember if it's not listed like that in the book. Then it's probably because that was the I, that was a converted suggested price for the treasure on the body. That's 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 totally fair. Then this is just very ornate specialist defiant series armor. You see that red gem in the middle? That's just a big pure ruby. Biggest ruby you've ever... It's bigger than Jacinto. My God, look at the size of this ruby. <laughs> the size of a baby's fist. That's actually not that big. No, I... Yeah, I know you're right. <laughs> the size of Ava's fist. Yeah, it's bigger. It's bigger. It's We're getting there. The size of a Jacinto. <laughs> yeah, I said that. I wanted to circle back to it because I think it felt more appropriate. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah, but I can conceptualize a fist. I don't know how big a sci-fi plant boy is. Tiny, <laughs> mechanically. That's like a foot and a half. Yeah, like size. A halfling. A quarter yeah. if you will. Like oh, small, so the size of Ava's head then. Got it's it. like okay. small cat sized, I think. <laughs> Ava's head is a foot and a half long? Think She's about a, what you're saying. Got a little Kasatha in her bloodline. That's fine. <laughs> oh, God. Not. Your head okay. is not a foot and a half long, like. No, I guess I've seen not. your head. I'm, Listen, I'm like, I'm looking at it. I'm like, that's that's a foot, maybe. I have a big dumb head. My head is not a foot and a half long. <laughs> oh, so the size of a tom head. Got it. Okay, that would be a big ruby. <laughs> All right, that's moving on. His fingers. I think we should stop goofing. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on over here? What is going on over there? I don't know. I'm not God. Yeah, you're God. You yeah. tell us. I'm waiting ah. for you guys to move. Oh. So, Ava, That's you'll fair. notice that Artania is just sort of like, Sinto seems to have instructed Artania to just sort of shadow you um, and and 
not necessarily keep you company, but like watch your six, so to speak. We're trying something new. Ooh, like fancy. Yeah. What's going on in here? It looks like a pit. Well, this is a deep pit hewn from hard stone descending into soot and darkness. Uh, if you could smell, it would smell of decay wafting up from the depths below. Eva mm. kicks a couple of pebbles down there. Mm. We should maybe avoid this. That's the murder pit, isn't it? Nerd, and as it were. I would like you all to roll initiative as you're staring down into the pit. Oh no. <laughs> Here we go again, rolling initiative. Fell into the pit. It's no devil in the mainframe, that's sure. That's for sure. Look at me rolling above 10 on initiative. Nice, nice. So cute. Listen, I have a plus three modifier to initiative. I'm like, I can't, I can't physically get below a 10. <laughs> yeah, keep rubbing it in. That's fine. That's all right. I <laughs> turn, turns out level one wizards have have crap initiative, so I'm oh, I'm reveling in it while I what, can. Friend, unless you find some other skill to roll initiative with, level sixteen, level seventeen wizards have crap initiative too. <laughs> so you better find. Medlon started rolling stealth as soon as he could, and now oh he's just God. invisible more often than he's not. So I can roll oh stealth. My gosh. All right, let me... Okay, sorry it took me so long. I had to find a thing. Oh, that's fine. As Shane said, we're also catching up because we haven't played a game since Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Green Ogre? Kroger? <laughs> oh, that's a grocery store chain, isn't it? It Green is. is. That's, from where, that, that's from where I grew up. I'm down here, too. Yeah, yeah, I know the McElroy brothers uh, talk about Kroger's occasionally on my bim bam. And Fred Meyer in the Northwest is also Kroger. Yeah. Has See, everyone... We just have, we have ShopRite around here, and we had A&P when I was growing up. They were going to combine the ShopRite and the A... Uh, no, they were going to combine the Stop and Shop and the A&P. Do you know what they were going to call it? Hmm. Stop and Stop. P? <laughs> oh. <laughs> the the university here is Austin P State University. They uh, mm -hmm. and their their football team is the Gubs, but their uh, slogan for their football team is believe it or not, let's go P. <laughs> I'm like nice, nice. Well, I remember it, I suppose. Well, yeah, you're, <laughs> you're never gonna forget it. That's for sure. You're never gonna. Ne that. I'm never gonna forget it. So I guess it's a success. Alrighty. Yeah. So. Ava, it's your turn, and I don't know if you can see anything. What would you like to do now that we're in initiative? You were dropping rocks into the depths below when last we... Yeah. You kicked a rock down there. Um, well, so it's interesting that we're here in combat without anything to see. Um, Ava, Ava's always on alert, so she would, uh, she'd be standing there waiting for something to happen. Not waiting for something, but she's always ready for, for the unexpected. So we're, we're just going to go ahead and delay. <clears throat> fair, fair. This is the benefit to rolling really low on initiative. I don't have to go before the bad guys. <laughs> All right, Lon. What would what would you be doing while Ava's kicking rocks into a hole and just got her head on a swivel? Yeah, move in a little bit where I can see all three directions. Also, looking for danger, I suppose. Yeah, because we're at a. Our initiative indicates that we've heard something. Seen something. Uh, yeah, you you you're hearing. You heard maybe like the scrape of like a boot on stone to the south maybe or it could have just been a rock falling you're not not quite sure there, there's something to be suspicious about or suspicious for some reason yeah sure <laughs> so yeah because we're at like a sort of intersection right now 
You you are at an intersection. <laughs> oh, that that's kind of fun. You hear uh I'm assuming you're you're just being aware, Lahan, so I move to the next turn. And someone is going to step a little bit closer, and you're gonna hear thud. Thud. And there's just the ever, ever so slight tremor in the ground as you as you hear that thud. Ooh, no, I don't need to measure a circle, a radius. The enhancement suite has added really handy measurement tools for spells. Like there, um, there, there's radii and curves and all sorts of fancy things. That might make me download that then. It only, it doesn't work on Chrome. It, it works on Firefox right now. I don't know about Edge, which I know you like. I think like is a very strong term. I I use Edge. Yes. Um, so I'm Better going to... Is, I mean, yeah. It's built on the same engine as Chrome now. Yeah, yeah. Well, so you hear this thud, thud, as though something big, massive, heavy took a couple steps, and it seems to be coming a, a little bit closer to you. And then all of a sudden, out of the darkness, just a chunk of rock is beelining towards Jacinto. What the flame? So I applied a minus That's two amazing. penalty. And it's a 37 to hit for 34 bludgeoning damage. That's <laughs> just a big old rock hits Jacinto. And Jacinto is flattened. <laughs> uh, you said 34? 34 bludgeoning, yes. Yeah. Ava will uh, come out of delay now. Yes. Uh, let me move you. <laughs> Jacinto just, you know, shouts, That way! <laughs> would, uh, would Lahan also be... Because you just moved. Are you, are you going to stay where you were? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, I'm good here. So Ava this is, this is moves great. down this hall and now can see that there are two ogres and what looks to be a giant of some sort and the giants just sort of Tossing a couple rocks up and down in his palm. Oh, how cute! All right. Um, Ava's gonna actually take a second move action. Okay. Coming up to here. And if I've done it right, they shouldn't... No, one one back. There we go. Now they shouldn't be able to get past Ava. They may be bigger than her, but she is an immovable pebble in this hallway. And that's it for Ava. Okay. So Lunderbud... The, Lunderbud the giant went. Ava moved. Krieg Ogre. Two is stepping forward. I need to get off my re the, the ruler. Krieg Ogre 2 is going to step forward. Oh, thank you. And fill that yeah, gap. Oh, and, and she begins doing her little battle dance with her with her um, Xeno lab. Oh, I forgot you got that dangerous, dangerous weapon. The Krieg Ogre steps forward and it is going to not use that weapon. It is going to use this weapon. It lashes out with what looks like a crudely designed ripoff of a of a do, a plasma doshko of some sort. A twenty four will miss your EAC, though. Correct, Ava. That is correct. Twenty four will miss. Okay, uh, that's its turn. It's a Cinto's turn. You just got smashed by a rock. Yeah, I'm not happy about that. Um, Asinto is going to say, Artania, go! And Artania scuttles. No, no scuttling. Oh, we're scuttling, all right. Stay away with uh, your scuttles. But I don't want my spider boy to die. So I think 
I think what we're going to do is Artanya will move up here. Jacinto will boop him. And Artanya will get a Deeprex Hardiness. DR10, uh, Thorns 10. I should really check if they've eroded this spell yet because this spell is bonkers. Um, and then Jacinto will give Artanya a second action. And Artanya will scuttle forth once more. Scuttle, scuttle, scuttle. And that's all of my turn. Okay. Oh, look, Finn. my turn again. <laughs> um, so Finn, on the other hand, is going to move. Uh, Finn has Stellar Rush. Oh, but you can't charge through friends. This is equal for the closest point, yeah? Sure. Yeah. Finn charges up and draws his gauntlet as he does this. And is going to punch with the void gauntlet. 29 to hit KAC for 29 damage. Oh, uh, it should in fact be... Uh, we're going to Photon it too. Uh, so it should be two more. Oh. Should be one more. Final answer. Finn had Song of the Spheres bonus activated. There we go. So a total of 30 bludgeoning damage. Ouch. You guys do so much damage. Uh, I believe that's Finn's whole turn, correct? It is. All right. Krieg Ogre 1 is going to step up to fill that gap, I think. And they're going to lash out with their own Plasma Doshko at Finn. Oh, 27 versus EAC. It's going to be close. I know we got that fancy new armor for Finn. Oh, that's right. Uh, 27 versus EAC is going to be a miss. Yeah. Oh, no. For the first time in forever. It is missed. Uh, it's it's Lahan's turn. We're at the top of the order now. All right. Um, well, Lahan will combat track this closest one and take a shot. Turn on combat tracking is on. Beautiful. Plasma bolter to the face. Come on. Twenty three to hit EAC. Uh, you were targeting which one? Krieg Ogre Water two. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, they don't have numbers on our oh. end. Oh, on my end they do. Left or right? I apologize. Left. The left one. You said 23. 23 meets, so it hits. 19. Um, uh, electric and fire. And you're in an elevated position, and they're very tall, so I don't think there's even any cover. Good, good. I like it. Otherwise, that would have missed, but... Uh, so that's your turn, and it's now Lunderbud's go. Uh, and Lunderbud, Lunderbud is going to use one of their fun abilities. Lunderbud sounds like a Pokemon. Who's that Pokemon? <laughs> it's Pikachu. Hey, you guys, get, you, sh you get out, get out of our home. This is what Lunderbud says, because Lunderbud is very forceful and very smart. Uh, but I need to see who's affected. That's who's affected, potentially. I need a will save from everyone within that aura, including my own ogres. Uh, so this would be these people here? Yes. Like the, the front line. Okay, cool. Yes. So Just will save once. from Artania. The oh boy. Story. I hope a 19's enough for that save. Uh, Probably enough. Uh, bet a twenty-five is enough, though. That's what a willful. Our know, is so willful. I'll. I'd be. I'd be concerned. Oh, that's Artanya, not not Jacinto. Oh, never mind. Yeah, Artanya's got a plus ten will save. That's uh, insane. Artanya's more willful than Ava. <laughs> that doesn't then, seem right. Finn, on the other hand, got a twelve, which is also very on brand for Finn. 
Okay, so first we'll save. A 19, you're fine. 25, you're fine. The 12, on the other hand, is not fine. And I need to make those saves for those ogres. Um, plus one won't help make that no. 12 a, an okay? Okay, because no, we do have a plus not. one. All right, that's we okay. We have a re-roll as well. Uh, nah, oh, thank Finn goodness. Suffer. I rolled a 15. So a 24. Uh, but... Uh, Craig Ogre 2 does, fails. And so what happens is Lunderbud is in fact a moon giant and they activated their uh, their aura, their lunar aura, and they activated the waning aura. Uh, a waning aura is affected creatures fall asleep as per the deep slumber spell. This, the giant's lunar aura is not limited by CR or hit dice, however. So no. Finn's so Finn's a sleepy boy. Finn's, Finn's a, sleepy a sleepy boy, boy. as is Ogre too. Love well, love that. Yeah, you know what? I do love that. Now I'm running one character. I was gonna say I see no problems with this. And <laughs> yeah. as, and the 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 deep slumber spell, the spell causing. It says living creatures. It's enchantment compulsion mind affecting. I think he's technically living enough for that. Nothing says it, nothing says that the Borai doesn't sleep. Uh, the, so in in these playable yeah. like undead other weird characters, there's always like some caveat in there. It's like you have these couple of immunities, but like all other things that affect yeah. like normal. I mean, that's where the plus one enough. bonus to a whole bunch of stuff is. That's so, not a blanket it, immunity. Yeah. It's a resistance. Yeah. It does yeah. say that Bore are medium undead. They're not medium humanoids, they're medium undead. They count for, for effects targeting creatures by type. Bore's count as both humanoids and undead. But you didn't say humanoid, you said living. Yep, so I think Finn, while failing, technically is fine. So the only thing that happens is one of my ogres goes to sleep. <laughs> correct. The best kind of correct. That's, uh, that's actually, actually that, that makes me laugh. That that tickles me. I like that. <laughs> but that was Would just a swift action. Humorous? <laughs> uh, uh, that was a swift action? That was a swift action. Swift uh, action to go many bylaws. 5, 10, 15 feet. So Lunderbud is going to step up here, and with their 15 feet of reach, they're going to reach out and slam come on and slam come on and slam Finn is what's happening uh, but I rolled a natural one <laughs> so Lunderbud gets tangled up in the first the first ogre and they kind of and the, the Krieg ogre's like get off me you idiot ah! and Lunderbud's like oh I'm, I'm sorry Bill I didn't mean to get it oh <laughs> Oh, Lunderbud so sounds nice. And it's yeah. Ava's turn. All right. So how incredibly impossible is it to tumble through somebody's square in this? Not impossible. It's 15 plus one and a half times CR. Uh, no, sorry. 20. 20 plus one and a half times CR. All right. Well, these guys aren't super high CR. So I'm, uh, Ava's trying to get here. <clears throat> Uh, athletics or acrobatics? I have not done this in a very long time. Uh, acrobatics. acrobatics. I'll remind you, uh, you do have a fly speed. Boo. Yeah, it is a 50-foot fly speed, too. Hold on, let me measure this out. I apologize, folks. One second. You have five. Oh, that's, that's just... Tw well, so I have... It's a... All right, I don't want to like go through and find all of the things. Yes, I have a fifty-foot fly speed with I, my jetpack. I believe you. It's it's my class plus a feat. Giving You're going me plus through ten both Ooh. times. You, you so got the, what, the the sky jockey or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and then um, yeah, because she's got that cool swanky new uh, mobility-based soldier uh, soldier class. 
she's um she adds plus 10 to all of her movement speed she has which is every movement speed now she can she has a swim a, a burrow a, a climb actually she might not have a burrow i don't think she has burrow i think that's the I one that's that like we the aspire one she to have. she can't she can't <laughs> dig one. through the ground you There's need to get you need to get Hisinto to cast that what is it like the groundling spell that turns you into a burrowing thing yeah. yeah i think that might be a technomancer list though maybe oh is it well either way ava's gonna land over here and then she's gonna do use something she hasn't used in a while that she totally forgot she had she'll put up her her hand at the at the giant the this big guy here yeah. and from from one of the rings that she's wearing on her hands um will produce a shield giving her a plus two ac <laughs> bonus against this guy you guys have never that, yeah, used that, that shield from you, ago. you have had that since early book two i think yeah. early book two that's an evergreen <laughs> item that's very useful plus two to ac very cool it's just against it's just against who it's aligned against but it is currently aligned against the the big the big yeah. baddie and big that shield guy. is a force shield in the shape of a sahedron rune yes it is uh, that is that everything, Ava? Yeah, that was a move, and then another move. So All right. Uh, Krieg Ogre number two is gonna go. Me 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 like a little angel. Hacinto. Guess whose turn it is next, though. Hacinto and Artania. So here comes Artania, little spider boy. Here comes the boy. <laughs> so, what's my range here? I've got... Oh, Ava, you're just too far away. I am sorry. But I'm going to activate a Song of the Spheres using a Resolve Point. So, I'll move up next round. I just, I don't have more... Will it affect you when you move up? Is it one of those like radiation, like emanation? Yeah, it's it's an emanation. Ah. It doesn't okay. specifically say that, but it says you know for a number of rounds, allies within sixty feet of you gain the following benefits. It implies emanation. I'll just so okay. I'll just have to make sure to move even further away. Got it. Oh God. Um, don't you know how many move actions I don't have? Um, <laughs> you have an animal companion. Of course I know. <laughs> I've managed to tie my actions up in Starfinder. Uh, who does that? So, Artanya will then uh, move in a guardy step direction. Uh, we'll we'll guardy step over here, and then Artanya will bite viciously into this sleeping ogre. You're now, viciously that into it, <laughs> biting that, viciously. Now, doesn't that wake him up? Um, I do want to know, though. Yeah, it, I, I assume it'll wake it up. However, the fight's going to be more interesting for Jed if he has more people to control. But more importantly, this might do extra damage. Like, doesn't this count as some sort of... Do I get, like, a bonus? Like, is I, this I, a coup de gras thing? Like... Um, well, we could... We can, we, we can look up the coup de gras rules because well, they are... You don't have to look it up because I can tell you right now it's a full round action to coup de gras something, so you couldn't have done it with a moving, uh, having to move up okay. to it. But you could position yourself to do it next turn because they are you helpless. You could. That's I was just uh, Yeah, that's fine. Artania will then bite viciously at Krieg Ogre number one. My favorite mixtape from the 90s. Uh... That's a 33, 34. Yeah, uh, that was a 19 on the die. Nice. Track on side B was just a banger. That mm. super, super hits yeah. for Please take 18. 19. 19, oh, 19. you're saying. Song of Spheres. Ouch. On. Your spider does oh. way too much damage. I'm sorry. Please give yourself one health back. I already had Song of Spheres ticked, apparently. Ah, now I'm invincible. Yes. Um... I will be right back. I hear a fire alarm going off downstairs. Just going to check to make sure everything is cool. Yes, go be uh, safe. Somebody, some, somebody needs to run Finn for me. I apologize. All right. Well, I'm sure Finn will punch. Oh, yes. All right. Would you like me to roll a punch for Finn? Sure. I got a, I got a Finn. Void Godlet. Bulljack? Probably. Finn's already in their face. Yeah, let's do it. 
23 and a 22. Versus... These are versus KAC, so they're going to miss, aren't they? They are. Oh, wait, 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 that's flanking. Oh, does it? I think so, with Ava, right there. They're... I don't. I don't think so, because they're not no, on opposite sides. Don't... Yeah. Yeah, you have to be able to draw a straight line from one uh, from the center of one combatant to the center of the other combatant through the enemy. Yeah, you would have to Finn would have to be here for them to be flanking. It does look like we should have flanking though, like that. Like I don't know. We're we're pretty well like on either side no, of this thing. Sorry, but... it's through it's through opposite sides of the baddie as well. Isn't no, it? and I, so, I understand the rules. I yeah, just mean from a, from like a military tactical standpoint, he is technically flanked. <laughs> yeah. No. In five E, yeah. you would be rolling with okay. advantage if we were using the optional flanking rule at this uh, point. <laughs> gross. Uh, I heard that I roll. <laughs> Simon hit yeah, yeah. I felt that from like well, you're not across the country anymore, but still. I felt the force of that eye roll. Simon I hates consumables. Too. Nick hates five E. We're, I don't hate five E. I hate advantage. Every time just... we, Ugh. no, no, we're not getting into this. We're not going to get into it. I hate three. Actually, that's that. Even that's not. I hate Wizards of the Coast. Every, the fair. company. That's fine. Everyone is entitled to their grown. opinion. The so company. We're, we're making, Please, we're making right, a lot of know. absolute statements on our show tonight about <laughs> very large groups. Let's move on. And I okay. I, I, Speaking of that, I'm going to go back. I'm not going to say I dislike all Amish people. I've just had a lot of bad run-ins with the Amish people local to where I grew up. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't even want to qualify mine. I just, I don't like Wizards of the Coast. <laughs> you don't have to qualify that one. I mean, <laughs> it's like, it, I it is Wizards of the Coast. <laughs> I said what I said. Fair. And I meant it. Oh, gosh. It, so, is, it is a singular entity versus like a group so, of people, right? So, so, we shouldn't hate groups of people. Companies are fine. Know, they're we, Amish. They companies. probably don't even like well, talk to each other very much amongst different groups. Of them. They're probably like totally independent. I'd also like to say I don't dislike all Amish. Just my negative interactions with the groups back home negatively predispose me towards Amish-owned businesses. Oh, yeah. I am yeah. still willing to try them if I get enough good positive inf uh, feedback on them. But I'm not necessarily going to go out of my way on my own. There's an Amish furniture, furniture store in my town. They make great furniture. and uh, that's I hope they I'll actually that's make furniture because the ones by me, they order furniture, wood furniture from China and they put an Amish sticker on it. That's... Well, that seems deceptive. Yeah, that doesn't not... sound very godly, but okay. <laughs> so it's Finn's turn. Did Finn, so do... Finn, Finn missed. <laughs> If you have two plus ones, two plus ones, you can make that first one hit. Otherwise, uh, those are wait, both good. Wait, miss. Song of the Sphere, Song of the Sphere. Finn forgot to click the Song of the Sphere, so those are plus one each time, in fact. Well, then you need one plus one for that first one to hit. We have that, and it's from I Shades. Buy a plus one, a and single Shades, one. And Shades says, this is wife. So, uh, Thank you, Shades. I assume you're striking the one directly below that is awake, but that, that, that is, is 28 bludgeoning damage. That is all that the crow is trained to say. Uh, this... I am wife. <laughs> That'd be great. Oh, no. uh, it's Krieg Ogre 1. Krieg Ogre 1 does not like just how this is turning out. Um, they don't really have an avenue of retreat. They're, they're just going to have to lay into Finn. Finn's the one that just hit them. It makes sense. I'm going to enjoy ripping you limb from limb. You're going to be tasty. And he rolls a 30 to hit. I think that hits Ooh, Finn's EAC now. That should hit Finn's. 29 electric and fire damage as this is a plasma doshko. He should also have fire resistance, though. I'm pretty I sure. I believe he? so, yes. I, for I keep forgetting that I'm Finn. We are all Finn at this point. We are. We are Finn. No, wait, but really, what was the damage? It was 29 electric and fire. 29 His name was Michael fire. Holtz. His I name was Michael Holtz. I swear, we. I, I told Finn to take a thermal capacitor and, yeah, the electrostatic field mark too. So he's got that, which is 10 th off the damage. So 29 minus 10 is 90. Did they have and the thermal capacitor? Because I thought they got the skin augment. 
Oh no, they got the feet. They got the feet. They're they have fire resistance equal to their bab. Oh my god, so they uh, but Finn may also have done that. He did, he did. He takes nine damage then. That's plasma disgusting. Cake. That's disgusting. <laughs> Resist twenty plasma. What do you want? That's disgusting, is what I say to that. Yeah, Lahago. Weapons are great until they're not. Yeah, multi damage, multi type damage is great until it's not, as Leif said. I just repeated what Leif said. It's okay. Mimicry is the fu- highest form of flattery. Feel flattered. Lahan, I talked over Jet saying, Nick, that it was your turn, so it's your turn. Beautiful. Um, let's, let's move in a bit. Just up to, like, here, right at the, at the junction, and shoot the same one again with the plasma bolter. Oh, it's an 18. That's gonna miss. That will miss. All right, Lunderbud gets to go. Lunderbud is going to use a swift action. Uh, Don't do that. Uh, it is going to. Act, it's going to shift their lunar aura from waning to waxing. And and the the ogres and Lunderbud himself. Oh wow, no, that's gonna be bad because he can't differentiate. Why is that an ability? That is that is silly. Unless I'm just misreading it, because it's a sixty foot aura and it's just affected creatures gain temporary hit points, but you can't differentiate and rule out your enemies. It doesn't look like. Because part of the aura is you can choose whether to include or exclude itself. That's an odd ability to have. I yeah. misread. Th- I misread that. I'm, they're not going to do that. They're not going to swift action. They're going to full attack Finn. Oh no, Ava. Ava's real close. Ava is no, real close. they're going to single attack Ava because they're going to reach over their shoulder and they're going to pull out a giant maul. Oh. <clears throat> Just giant sahedron rune in his face and he decides to smash. Okay, got it. Uh, I rolled a natural 20. Uh, for... <laughs> oh! Ho, ho, ho! Hold on. Hold on. Oh, no. What is that, So the dented casa that I got several, <laughs> several books ago uh in fact turns your nat 20 into a a a normal hit oh but you're gonna miss out on 69 damage if you do that oh no there was a a 10 percent chance of that happening folks (laughs) wait no the dented casa just you just spend resolve right yeah i think you just burn resolve and then the casa gets dented more Oh, that's oh, that's way better than I thought it was. Yeah, the yeah. Dead has a really fun, a really fun magic item. Yeah, the... You know, no, no, don't take this away from me. It gave me fortification ten, and I got it. Okay, that's fine. That's a really awesome roll, Leif. I don't want to take that away from you. I've been craving that with Gus with my Sido conversion. You know, uh, I was gonna say it feels. It actually kind of feels dirty because Jet's like every other like session trying to. <laughs> hey, I'm at the point where I have a twenty percent chance now, y'all. Oh, oh. Well, that, that's even better. Uh, but that's 37 bludgeoning damage to Ava. Okay. How many resolve points do you have to spend for a dented casa? Sorry, I'll, I can just two. pull it up. I'll figure it's it out. Two. I, it's I two. Just it up. It's two. Okay, thank you. I will go ahead and spend those. This also eats your reaction. Uh, <laughs> that is fine. I'm going next. Uh, yeah, it's now Ava's <laughs> turn as you just got, I think you just got slammed in the dome with that maul and the mall, and your, and your, and your helmet just kind of went dink. It was 37 damage. 37 bludgeoning. Okay. Believe it or not, I don't have any resistances to bludgeoning. (laughs) Oh, wow. All right. She's going to respond with a... Oh, man, is... Is it a, another move action to maintain the, the aligned shield, or is it just aligned against him now? I can't remember. 
Every turn you have to spend an action with, oh, with shield in general. I think. Gross. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, you're the only person I know that's used a shield life. <laughs> oh, man, I I play one one game of Pathfinder 2 and I'm forgetting everything. Mm, that's how they get you. <laughs> I, I've succumbed to the curse. Uh, I will I will use a move action this round to maintain alignment and then I'll go look it up and then I'm also attacking with the Xeno Lash. Oh, who are you against the guy that just tried to murder me? <laughs> oh, you're gonna attack poor Lunderbud, eh? Or he just tried to smash my brains out. Uh he is that I'm assuming that's versus KAC because of the slashing component. It is in fact versus KAC. That will just miss. If you have a plus just one, miss? if you have a plus one scrolled away somewhere, you can make that hit. We we only used one last time. I'll use the other one. Uh, we don't have another one. What? I thought you said we had two. Nope. I never mind. Re-roll. Oh well, never mind then. And I'm I'll... okay. It is, it's just a piddly twenty-five damage. If only you'd been in my aura. If uh, if only I had been catch. Yeah. Catch wouldn't miss. You you lash out and Lunderblood Lunderbud just kind of flails awkwardly back. Just like oh! <laughs> very ungraceful. The voice yep. in the back of Ava's head's like, How could you miss? There's nothing but him in front of you. Krieg Ogre too. Me 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 me. Me 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 me. Me 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 me. Jacinto. <laughs> Hi, Jacinto is going to tell Artanya to do the thing. He says, do the thing, Artanya, and we'll also move up, moving Ava firmly into his aura of encouragement, musical encouragement. However, I haven't mentioned lately that I love playing my little space bard, even if he's with, not. With musical guest Jacinto. Yeah. So is Artanya going to do, can Artanya do a full action? And are they going to do it to coup de grace? Yeah, so, so I'll I'll let you rule this one way or another because Artanya can, uh, if I give him a move and a swift, he can uh, take a full attack typically, which is a full action. Um, he doesn't. It doesn't say that he can take a full action, but, but he can do a full attack. I which is I would cool. allow because this is super cool. I would I love the idea of Artanya doing this. Uh, you automatically will hit, and it's an automatic critical hit. If Love the target that. survives the damage, then the target will have to make a fortitude saving throw equal to 10 plus your level or your CR. Okay, which is 10. So it'll okay. be fortitude DC 20. So I will just roll our Tanya's attack twice because we roll twice for crits in this system. In fact, I'll just roll a full attack and be very sad if I roll a crit. I didn't. Whoa. So that is all. Oh, I rolled 20 each time. So that's 40 points of piercing damage as Artanya just uh, leans, uh, just looms over this ogre on the ground. And I think definitely goes for the neck, goes for the, the jugular. Yeah. And it, it does survive that strike, uh, but that was a lot of damage. Now you have, I'm gonna let you know, a 50-50 chance of this thing dying. And I'm gonna let you roll the dice. Oh boy. Uh, and you can pick so, high or low is, is, is this creature's doom. All right. So I'll roll a D 20 on a one to 10. It fails on 11 to 20. It succeeds. Sure. Uh, so I want low numbers. Ah, that's a 15. Ah, <laughs> it succeeds and it's, it's a, it's awake and it's got a spider cuddling on its neck. Oh yeah. Yeah. We're getting real friendly. Uh, and that is my whole turn. Oh, look, second turn. Uh, so it's Finn's turn. Unless somebody else really wants to, uh, wants to roll for Finn. Finn is at three rounds of photon attunement. And I think Finn probably wants to do something flashy and cool. So Finn is going to throw his wings open and fly over these Kriegs 
to right here. Can right. I do that? Uh, I would say your, your fin would be at an elevated position on the staircase. You're probably standing about head level. So you'd have to go up probably one five foot square and then you could go okay. over. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So then Finn will land here. He'll land here. And then uh, this does provoke just a comical amount of attacks of opportunity. Okay. So. Okay. All right. Well, here comes a, here comes a mall from Lunderbud. More like Wonderbud. I was hearing a weird noise from somewhere. I don't know where. Um, a natural one will miss Finn, though. Woo! Uh, and here come two Dashko swings from... Actually, no, one Dashko swing. The other creature's prone. Uh, he can still make attacks of opportunity. He just has a minus two penalty to those attacks. Or minus four. I'll double check. I think check. it's minus four. I think it's minus four. A 35 to hit from Kriegoger one for... Thir for uh, take 14 damage. I've already subtracted your... Finn's disgusting amount of resistance. <laughs> uh, yes, and something I forgot to do before, we don't need to go back and do it again, but please take 2d6 or 7 points of electricity damage as uh, you get a sharp static shock. And you said 15? 14. It's 14 okay. after all your resistances. Gotcha. Uh, and I will roll again and subtract 4, and that will be 19, and that will miss. All right. And then Finn does that coolest of things that Solarians can do. It's not really the coolest thing, but one of the most exciting things a Solarian can do. Uh, supernova. So That's some please. Real good damage. Yeah. Uh, thirty-nine damage. Doesn't Reflux. look like it's counting photon or song of the sphere. So please add three to that. So it is forty-two damage before save. Both of the ogres have failed. Love it. Uh, let's see what happens with Lunderbud. This is, for those of you who are unsure at home, a supernova. Finn Lunderbud, flies here. Lunderbud saves, so half of that damage. You said it's 42? Yes. So 21. Mm -hmm. So 11. <laughs> 11. You're not the uh, only one with resistances, uh, but a full forty-two to the others. Yeah, that's and they fair. are they are looking super bad. Yeah, that's super still bad. 95, 95 damage dealt by Finn for a standard action. Who says Solarians aren't cool? Um, that was just back in the day. People really ragged on Solarians a lot in the early uh, days. I do. I say Solarians aren't cool. Well, I say you're not cool. Mm. Okay. Uh, and that's Finn's whole Ogre turn. or die. Uh, All right. No. Ogre one is super, super hurt. Um, this is foolish. They're going to try and shove Lunderbud and just move through them and run. Oh. And they're going to die from attacks of opportunity, I'm sure. But let me see their movement speed. Oh, they, they're wearing the wrong armor. Their movement speeds are poop. They get that far if they survive those, what, th two, three attacks of opportunity? There we go. That They survived that bite. Ava Finn... Oh, yeah. Ava misses somehow, but Finn just clocks him in the back of the dome as they're turning around to run, shoving against Lunderbud. And they they actually go down right over here. Just slumped to the ground like a sack of potatoes. Um, it's Lahan's turn. All right, let's uh, combat track the other one. Sure. I'll take sure. a shot. I mean, 24 you, versus EAC. That will, I'm, that, yep. Super hits for oh, 20 damage. So much damage, it's dead as well. Perfect. 
All that's left standing is 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 Lunderbutt. Why you're killing my family? <laughs> and it's Lunderbutt's turn. Are we the baddies? Yeah. Uh, where is it? What abilities? I want to see if I'm missing out on any abilities. I am not. Oh no, I was looking at the wrong one. Sorry. Nope, 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 nope. Yep, nope. He's he's pretty basic. He's gonna full attack on Ava. What a surprise! What a surprise! Why? Roll off. Uh, twenty-four versus KAC. I'm sure will actually it'd be a twenty versus KAC. I'm sure that'll miss. Weird. Hero Lab has once again changed their dice roll interface. I'm having to relearn how to do a full attack because it's no longer a checkbox. Uh, but, wow, I rolled the exact same number again for a total of 20 versus KAC. So, Lunderbutt is like, oh, you're killing my family! And just wailing, just like waving the hammer around over his head, not anywhere near Ava. And it's it's Ava's turn. I don't know. I'm kind of feeling bad, guys. I don't know. I'm not... Uh, it feels kind of... Well... <clears throat> drops the... Uh, drops the shield, and it just kind of dissipates as a free action. Um, draws a flash shuriken as a move action. It stabs it into him. There we go. Tw 29 to hit EAC, and I don't have Song of the Spheres active, so it's actually a 30 to hit EAC. That will super duper hit for, gosh, 37 damage. She do 37 so damage. Sickening uh, amounts of damage. Oh, yeah. Sickening amounts of damage. <laughs> you did almost as much on a normal hit as as Artanya does on a f crit. <laughs> I forgot to use my battle cry. Come on, Tom. I guess I wasn't being true to Ava's form, I guess. I wasn't using shurikens. Yeah. That's it. Her trick is shurikens. Uh, Craig Ogre 2 is dead. Jacinto, it's your turn. All right. Artanya is going to take a move action, and Jacinto will spur him on with a uh, his own move action. So now Artanya has a little bit of the standard, as always. Uh, has this... Has La Lunderbud taken an attack of opportunity this round? Nope. All right. So Artanya's going to try and tumble. So Artanya will make an acrobatics check. Or uh, he'll make two acrobatics checks. Uh, 32 versus CR plus uh, times one and a half plus 15. You're trying to go around him, right? So that's... No, no, I just want to... I just... So I want to end here. I'm going to have to make two. Okay. But I'm um, three, three it, it's 10 plus one and a half for that? No, it's 15. 15? Sorry about that. Uh, so 15 plus 30. You just made it. Cool. Uh, and now the DC is uh, 17 plus one and a half times CR. And no. I failed. That's a 26 on uh, the roll. So you may smack at me if you like. I rolled a, as a four on the die for a 23 to hit Artanya, which misses. Does it indeed? It does. Look at my KAC. What a beefy danger spider. So uh, then Artanya will take a bite at this giant. David and Goliath, that's a 32 versus KAC for 24 points of piercing damage. Oh, no, I don't. I disapprove. Man, Artani is so cool. I'm so glad I went with the creature companion. And uh, Sinto's standard action, he will uh, vogue. No, Sinto doesn't vogue. Uh, he'll cheer Artania on and say, Ah, oh, go! Doing great! Woo! And that's, that's me. And now it's you again. Jacinto pom poms. Mm -hmm. And now it's you again. Hi. Uh, so now this guy's taking an attack of opportunity. Finn just sort of slides over here and takes a 
takes a single punch. 32 with flanking for 32 points of bludgeoning. Uh, Sorry, bulgeoning. Bulgeoning, yeah. That super duper does hit. Uh, it's so much damage. End of Finn's turn. Lahan, it's your turn. There's poor Lunderbud, wailing about how you've killed his family, trying to crush your danger spider friend. And your Ava. What did you say your name was? But mostly your danger spider friend. Nick? What? It's your turn. Oh, that's my bad. Sorry. I got distracted. Um... I will combat track the big bad and take a shot. Oh, 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 victory is mine. Um, that is 30, 43 damage. If I did my 40, math right. Yeah, 43 electric and fire uh, and a wound. Well, not quite 43 because they do have a little bit of resistance. So 33. And yes, a wound. A wound. Oh, roll a d20. Uh, roll a d20, yes. Aha. Three. That's a bleed. That is a bleed for a d6. No d6 save. Bleed. No save. Beautiful. No saves. Uh, I don't like that. It's Lunderbud's turn. Oh, that hurt! And Lunderbud. 1d6. Yep, do the, do the d6. Six. Yes! Uh, that did hurt. Beautiful. Uh, Lunderbud's like, oh, that hurt! And there, wait, let me read an ability, because this might be funny. Uh... Oh, no, no, that's, that's a specific thing. All right. So I'm getting attacked of attack of opportunity. I am 100% certain. Oh, no. Why would it do that to me? There we go. It, he, he is running away into the side cavern over here. Oh, that's a 33 versus CAC for another 24 points of piercing damage from our time. Uh, Ava, Finn. Oh, no. The 31 oh, no. for 33, more points of damage. And a 35 for 29, bulgeoning damage. Oh, that, you know what happens? You didn't even kill Underbutt. You dropped him unconscious. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, although he is bleeding. So if you oh. just leave him, he will die. I mean, he's a giant. Um, he is our enemy, right? Yeah, Should I we... mean, if you, if if you if you want some sway one way or the other, you could make a sense motive check on him. Sure, Asinto's good at sensing motives. I I want a sense motive check, please. Roll twenty. Uh, oh, I'll take the first one. Yeah. Uh, uh, based on the little bit of interaction that you saw between the Krieg Ogres and Lunderbud, uh, you're pretty sure this is a abusive relationship and Lunderbud is not... Um, maybe they're a little bit developmentally not where they should be. Uh, and they've been taken advantage of. They've been maybe like you, the, the little bit of play there. You, you talked about, he talked about defending his family and they talked to him with disdain or anger. Mm. Uh, you think that this, they, they might be maybe using him for his brute strength. <laughs> oh, say no more. Uh, so your children are five years behind where they should be in school. We're taking them away from you. Oh, and also we're killing you. <laughs> and then. We're child protective uh, services. Yes, we are space child, spiled protective except, services. Uh, except we killed the children. 
guys. No, 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 no. Other way around. Other way around. Um, the giant is the one that uh, the giant is the child in this analogy. Anyway, oh. yes, yeah. So Jacinto will uh, walk up and say, uh, "Go with me. I think I have an angle on this guy." Uh, and Sinto will give this guy just just a little bit of that, just a little bit of that magic, uh, the song of the spheres in a Mystic Hero 1. Uh, okay. I didn't know if you were going to like just stabilize, just leave him unconscious. <laughs> nah, you know, I can, I can, I've got spell slots to burn. Look, that wasn't even a good heal. Uh, six points of healing. Uh, which also immediately ends the bleed as it is magical healing. Yes, the bleed is ended. They are sitting at six hit points. Uh, they, when they did fall unconscious, they fell prone. They they dropped that maul. They're they're barehanded, which their bare hands are very dangerous. But they're groggily sort of waking up. They're like, oh no. <laughs> um, hi. So don't worry about uh, the spider that's sitting on your chest. That's just sort of a precautionary thing. Uh, and Artania is indeed perched on on his chest by his neck. Um, so, uh, in fact, you know what? Maybe that was a little strong. Artania, why don't you come, come Whoa, down you just, there? You just broke up there, Tom. I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. The My last voice I heard was maybe there. that was a little strong. Yeah. My voice probably just went up into that register that my mic doesn't like for some reason. Um They'll say, uh, that was a little strong. Artania, why don't you come off down there? And Artania sort of slinks down and Jacinto will say, now I'm getting this, by the way, I'm Jacinto. What's your name? I'm, I'm Lunderbud. And just automatically, you can tell that they weren't even thinking about it. They sort of reach out and they hold like a finger out to you. <laughs> oh, uh, Jacinto will two-handed, you know, just, uh, grab it with his little twig hands and and shake. Uh, probably get lifted off the ground. So I get the sense that you are perhaps undervalued here. Would you would you agree with that statement? Well, well I don't know that they're, they're my family or they were my family. I some of them died just now. I I kind of mm. feel angry about that, but I also kind of feel happy. Uh, and that, that right there, let's hold on to that for a second. You feel happy that your, and he makes, you know, twig air quotes, family died. Now, that says something, doesn't it? I think, well, says I'm you know a bad what? Person. <laughs> no, 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 no. Listen, family is not a right. Family is earned. Yes, your blood, your blood family, or not even your blood family, uh, can mean a lot to you. But if they treat you like Fleem, they don't get to call. The, they don't get to, you know, uh, uh, rely on you and do these things to you without question. Uh, they are not your family, uh, Lunderbud. They are your abusers, and that's not cool. But but they they always say that I owe them. They I have a roof over my head and food. And look, they put me in this armor. <laughs> oh, that's the worst. no, no! Just because they give you nice things doesn't mean that they get to then call you names and swear at you and push you out of the way. Uh, that's abusive as all prong, uh, Blunderbud. Um. So. Now, Go ahead if you had a thought. Yeah, yeah. So, here's here's what I here's what I think. Um, you again don't owe these creeps anything. Uh, we've been. I'll be honest with you, Lunderbud. We've been uh, sort of burning a swath through the Krieg family the past. Uh, well, it feels like months. Uh, but you know, <coughs> that was you. <laughs> oh. oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're going to be coming through here like Avenging Angels. Um, so you, on the other hand, seem like a pretty cool guy. What Do you have any, like, hobbies or anything that you uh, that you, you like to do in your spare time? I, I, I lift things. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. That was a really good shot. You clocked me. I never get hit. I can throw, um, I can throw rocks like nobody's business. Mm, now... 
I'm I'm neutral good, so I really shouldn't ask you to wade into battle against your former family uh, after we beat you up. So what I think we should do instead, and Hacinta like turns to the rest of the party, <laughs> maybe we should just let Lunderbud go, and you know maybe this maybe this will you know uh, balance out in the karmic balance of the universe maybe we'll we'll earn ourselves some goodwill here but also wonderbud doesn't seem like he's a threat to us anymore right well <clears throat> he is very positively i think over the course of this conversation uh i think technically i could require a diplomacy role to shift his attitude to friendly or something but he was mm. negatively disposed to his family following them out of a sense of duty and loyalty you mm. guys did save his life and you have an absurd diplomacy bonus that I... <laughs> it's, it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's real good. It's a plus, what, 22, 23? Yeah. You know what? I'll roll you a diplomacy check. Largely Whoa, because... that's way less than I thought. <laughs> it's 30. It's still um, very high. Yeah, you know what? I've got a re-roll from Shades here, and we are five minutes out from the end of the episode, so I might oh, as well... Oh, we should use that. What well. does it say? Yeah. This is your wife? Uh, so right. thank you, Shades, for that. And well, which honestly, honestly, that 30 was enough to shift him to friendly because I had them in my head as indifferent. A, that's good, because I only got a 27 with the this is your wife re-roll, so I'll take that 30, please. <laughs> yeah, so they are... Yeah, they might give you some advice or simple aid, but they won't go out of their way uh, to, to be that's, super helpful. So you know, for what you were trying to do, that's exactly what you wanted, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't, I, Tom, don't think it makes sense for Jacinto to uh, turn this guy around and uh, march, frog march him into the front lines of a battle with his uh, family members. Uh, uh, if I were playing a more manipulative character, more evil leaning character, I might do that. But or lawful good. Maybe. I don't know. The, Being it, lawful it, good does not mean you can do evil things to evil creatures. No, no, no. I know. I was making a crack at the people that use lawful good as an excuse to be complete jerks. Ah, uh, yes. That's not the way it works. I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> Again, making a crack at the people that use that as an excuse. Yeah, no, I, I get you. Oh, it's because the perception of lawful good is really just lawful evil masquerading as lawful good. Yeah. So the police system. So what does this guy tell us? <laughs> um... Uh, what, like, you, you haven't really asked him a question. You were just like, hey, oh. please don't keep attacking us. Go sit in the corner is basically what you said. Yeah, so I'll ask, you know, um, who do we have what's to worry the about? Pit? Oh, yeah, what's with the pit? Uh, that, that's where we used to put up the bodies that they offered up to the mother of monsters. But lately, there's this guy, Barl Breakbones. I know, Jude. Mm -hmm. There's this guy, Barl Break, but he scares me. Yeah. He's, he's, yeah. he's, he's as big as me at the very least. Oh. And he's, he killed people. And, and I know that doesn't sound unusual, but then they get back up and they go, rah, 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 and they don't really talk very much anymore. Oh, a necromancer. Interesting. And then he, he does things to some of us and... Like, there, there's these symbols that are carved into their skin, and then it, something goes wrong, and they just get dumped in the pit <laughs> when, um, they, when they die. Asinto makes very meaningful eye contact with the rest of the party. Okay. Is there anything else? Are there any traps? Ooh, I love a good trap. Are there any traps in there? I don't think so. There, there are two new people, too, on top of Barl, though. There's a snake lady, and then she has a little a little wee man who I don't know what species he is, but he's got, he's got like, springy legs. Looked like he'd be good at jumping. Can I make a life science check off of that description? 
Uh, sh sure. Even just to know the name of the race. That's a 22. Uh, sounds possibly like a Fentomite, which thinking back, Caven Windstrike was a Fentomite. <laughs> oh. Oh, we get to beat up Craven. <laughs> yes. Uh, the guy who ran away with our intercopter. <laughs> All right. Oh, that yeah. jerk. Dad, Dad gave me that sheet, and it was like, he's going to try and run away at the first opportunity, so that was what I did. Yeah. Like, heck this, I'm out of here. Oh, that's right. And then what's her name? Snake Lady got away with Craven, we think. Yes. Well, we, we, we surmise. We suspect, yes. We suspect, yes. Okay. Oh, well. Uh, thank we as you very gods, much. as players know. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Lunderbud. You've been, uh, well, if I may say, a real bud. <laughs> um, aside from conking me over the head with a boulder. That was, that was a good throw. <laughs> it was it a very was. good throw. I will hopefully remember it knuckles. if I haven't been concussed. Um, yeah, so you, I don't know, uh, you should hide somewhere while we, uh, or, you know, pretend that we killed you or something. I'll go, I'll go wait for you up by the, the, uh, the exit. Yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. That's a good plan. Uh, yeah, all right. or we could send him back to the ship, say telepathically, if you don't think he'll break oh, anything. Wow. He might. Um, you know, you could you could wait. Are we in the heartbreaker right now? I forget. I yeah, you're still in the heartbreaker. Here, yeah? It, it's okay. on the bottom of the asteroid, like hours away. Right. Yeah, remember no, we had to right, yeah. roll our ship. What? No. Wrong huh. game. Wrong game. <laughs> I'm, I'm not doing that to you guys after it was done to me, Tom. <laughs> Bad Tom. It's like, I would never do such a thing to my players. Not so soon Ever. after the other one. <laughs> uh, uh, well, you know, the Heartbreaker's like hours away. I don't I don't know. I don't want him to get lost on the way. Yeah, he, by he the door is better. It. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Why don't you go wait by the entrance and we will we'll find something for you to do if you want. If you want. Uh, once we finish here. Uh, okay, that sounds great. And as as he says that, kind of drifting up from this area right here, you hear kind of like a, a, a trio of voices say, uh, Lunderbud Deary, when you're done talking to your new friends, send them our way, please. And that's where we're going to end. Oh, <laughs> oh no. no. Oh no, we've been heard. <laughs> All right. They know we're here. I honestly expected you to kill Lunderbud and I was hoping to make you feel a little bad, but I like that it worked out to z exactly zero hit points and then you got him back up and talking. Me too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am it. increasingly finding as a player that if you can justify it, resurrecting your enemies is and talking to them and by resurrecting i mean saving their lives and then talking to them is usually the more interesting option i had i did not have a voice planned for lunderblood i did not i like i knew that he was supposed to be not so smart but i did not have that whole persona planned i i, I managed to improvise all that i was happy with that well done yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, we, we ran a little bit late. I'm sorry about that, but I wanted to get us to a good stopping point. Oh, good. It's fine. Uh, okay. I would like to thank Paizo for their wonderful product. Um, Leif, were you running audio this time? We were having a weird time with uh, Hydra. <laughs> Hydra. No, I ran not? audio this yeah, time. There we go. Time, sorry, no. sorry, Nick. Thank you for running it, Nick. I appreciate it. It was <laughs> I mean, a weird cluster. I all I did was put Lo-Fi Girl on a loop. Well, it Thank was you, good. Lo-Fi Girl. <laughs> you know what? I'm pretty okay with Lo-Fi Girl as our general, as our yeah. general music that yeah. we're listening to. Don't yeah, worry. no, her stuff is great. You can find it on Spotify. We have discovered. Um, now we run things through Hydra. Um, so go check her out. 
give, give her a follow. Um, use it for your games. All that good stuff. Um, and I'd like to thank you three for joining me. I, I've been very sad that we've been missing our missing our game, and I'm very glad to be back. Um, me too. And, and you can tell that I think we all were because we spent so much time catching up. Because I, I almost expected you guys to steamroll through this and maybe even finish the book, but I'm th I think it's going to be at least one more game if we're on the ball next time. Oh, we can be yeah. on the ball. Hopefully I'm not stuck in traffic next time. Apologies for that. No, you're not not, not angry with anybody. I, just... I mean, I heard there's termination dust. Has everyone forgotten how to drive? There's no snow on the roads yet. I think it's more of a combination of um, like last camping trips and all uh, coming from the the arm and then mm -hmm. fair traffic coming from the valley. Oh so, yeah, yeah it's everywhere yeah, it's just busy and every it all converges on yep. um, on anchor. Yeah. Wow. So this Sunday, Tom, fly for your die. Yeah. Uh, the crew has amassed a certain amount of, hey, if you're not up on our fly for your die and you don't want to be spoiled, uh, you should stop listening for the next 30 seconds or so. So, three, two. All right, spoilers. So uh, the crew has amassed resources to get back at Evgenia Jameson Corporation's executive, vi executive vice president, Aline Rasora. Man, I have to say the whole I hate thing. them so much. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. you should. Because uh, they are a jerk and they stole your ship. And with the help of the Golden League. But we'll get to them eventually. <laughs> so you found their location. And now you have to just fix up your ship. I need to remind you all, hey, by the way, you if you have any BP kicking around, uh, like with Auntie Nuna, you can use that to fix up your ship. I should post that in Series 4. You so you're going to... Fix up your ship. Do we have the new ship's page so that we can see what it's statted out to be? Yes, you do. It is on the okay. roll 20. I Sorry, was I kind and benevolent GM and statted everything out down to the BP and power consumption. I, I feel like as, as the resident mechanic, I should probably be in charge of upgrading stuff, but I want everybody's input before I go in and change around the sheet. I want you to go yeah. wild and do what, what makes you happy. Uh, go wild with with what <laughs> the, the 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 VR that turned that I can somehow finagle turn into like some additional uh, like countermeasures and the <laughs> the, hey, the, pla and the, the plasma cannon TM that uh, the our our fellow crew just brought us just oh happened to have one here you go <laughs> I, and I think we're sitting on like twenty more BP maybe. <laughs> This isn't it isn't shady at all. Well, we've also been burned. Like, are people gonna sell parts to us? I guess we can manufacture stuff. Yeah, and you yeah. might be able to find them through, you know, rat rod and stuff. Because now the spike. At this point, you've made a few contacts, right? That don't care about the burn. Okay. Okay. So, well, yeah. we can discuss this all through yeah. Back oh, yeah. channels, yeah. But... So you're gonna fix up your starship, uh, the rust bug love the rust bug and then you're gonna fly off into the vast to hunt down aline risora at her palace castle thing out in the diaspora and that was an obscure lord of the rings reference because we are contractually obligated to make one every episode I, so. this I did i put it in the contracts yeah so um, i'm sure nothing will go wrong with that no and never. i like to mention that Despite the fact that I submitted the request off for Gen Con like two months ago, I think, it still has not been approved, but I should be missing the weekend after that, as should Tom, for an entirely different reason. Yeah, so uh, in fact, we are, uh, I have, uh, we are going to be off on the 19th, not the 12th, so that's, that's actually two weeks from this Sunday, Jen. So oh, sorry, this I Sunday. Miss... I looked at the okay. calendar. Uh, yeah, just just correcting it so nobody's confused. We have fifth. If you have to be a Gen Con, look for Jet in a Nansa shirt. He will give you shiny Nansa cards with yes. our art on them. Yeah. I'll take those to uh, those files to Office Max or something. Yes, we yeah. can do that. We we gotta do the orders, but he will have them. We swear. Oh yeah. Definitely, definitely. 
it wouldn't it wouldn't be con related if it wasn't down to the wire like that right yeah. I, it, it just, has to be it's yeah i'm just waiting for despite the fact that i have paid for things my time off approval it shouldn't be that hard considering two of the days i asked off are the two days that they already give me off it's just two more days yeah on two separate yeah. pay periods <laughs> Uh, so, oh, if you have any questions, comments, shout outs, anything, feel free to contact us. We've got nonstandardaction at gmail.com. We've got our Discord, which the link is is below, I believe. Below. Yes, uh, it's somewhere. Uh, and that's if you're watching us on Twitch. Uh, if not, hunt us down on Twitch. And then the Discord link will be below. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, getting bad echo from Nick. I'm sorry. Yeah. Also, please send in icebreakers. I love icebreakers. I chew through the icebreakers because I think at this point I might have the longest running. Sh we might have the longest running show going for Nansa. This is indeed our longest running show. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so please, please, questions from the characters' perspectives. Feel free to ask those. There's a form on the welcome channel and the feedback channel it is pinned on one and it's just front and center on the welcome channel and yeah. i think that's all i got i think it's time for us to say goodbye to everybody goodbye, goodbye to everybody, everybody. everybody.